MCAT score, 518, crushed it. So the question is, well, why did you only get one interview? Application Renovation Season 3. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm excited to chat with you about your application. And I'm mm -hmm. excited to hear that uh, from when you applied to be on Application Renovation, you had zero interviews, but you got one mm -hmm. interview. Uh, yeah. And we're waiting to hear back. So hopefully good news. Um, yeah. But if not good news, hopefully we'll cover some things today that will make you a stronger applicant next time mm -hmm. and hopefully help some people watching as well. Yeah. So tell me a little bit of wow, uh, about why you think the application cycle hasn't gone as well as you wanted it to go. I think with my application, it wasn't really much about the stats, uh, but it was mostly about, I think, how I told my story I think that I was too much into um I was trying to show not tell but at the same time I think I got caught up in my own head if that makes sense and so I ended up maybe not doing such a great job because I was too worried about how to you know you hear a lot about people wanting to stand out but yep. that overcomplicates everything <laughs> It usually does, unfortunately. <laughs> Hopefully I've done enough application renovations where people will never make that mistake again, but unfortunately people do, uh, and it'll be my job to fight that for the rest of my life. So, um, <laughs> all right, are you ready to jump into your application? Yeah, totally. All right, so let's look at your application here. So I, I highlighted 627 as an application <laughs> date. Not super late, just a little bit later. But the bigger thing is you could see if, if students have watched earlier application renovations, applying just a couple weeks earlier has a huge difference on when that process date happened. Mm -hmm. And some of this was COVID related with mm -hmm. um, transcript issues and lots of other things that the AMC completely mm -hmm. mishandled. Um, mm -hmm. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, you're an international applicant. And so yeah. that, that complicates things and yeah. uh, makes, makes things a little bit harder because not every school will accept an international applicant. And there's always mm -hmm. lots of, of homework that students need to do to find these quote unquote international friendly schools. Then we get to your disadvantaged essay. Mm -hmm. And you see here that I wrote 24 typos. <laughs> Talk to me about and, and I didn't I, I wanted to go and do a character count um, mm -hmm. it looks pretty close to the 1325 characters that you're mm -hmm. given for this I want to understand and I'll zoom in here so students can see the lack of spaces after okay. punctuation was that strategic for character count or is that some Italian thing? <laughs> I was Googling it. I'm like, do Italians lose, use spaces after punctuation? And my wife was like, why are you being so stereotypical? I'm like, I'm just asking a question. I don't know. Um, it's not an Italian thing. I think it was just um, me trying to, I don't know. I think at some point you're proofreading so much, you're like removing and adding things. And I probably just went through spaces. I was like, oh, that's I don't need that. <laughs> This is a wasted space. I don't need that. And so there was just, there was something about seeing this and it's throughout the whole application, unfortunately, okay. to where if I saw this, honestly, I would, I would just throw it out. Okay. I would go, this student, I'm not sure what happened here, but the student obviously is either a trying to game the system by mm -hmm. writing 1325 quote unquote characters without spaces. They're like, ah, people don't need spaces. Like I'm surprised you didn't delete the spaces in between words too. I'm like, oh, we don't need, we don't need these spaces either. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and so that was just a, right off the bat. I'm like, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. um, and I counted them and it was like, okay, 24. If I want to count those as typos, that's 24 typos. Okay. Um, and I would have just given up on the application at that point. Um, but let's ignore that, right? I just want to get that off the bat. Let's ignore mm -hmm. that and look at the messaging. 
And so the messaging is, I'm disadvantaged because I'm an immigrant. And I'm not sure that's a disadvantaged student. Um, okay. Right? The disadvantaged is typically like, I'm in this situation and uh, I grew up in this area. My parents were poor. I, w- I, lived, in, I lived in a rural environment. And I didn't have access to healthcare. I didn't have access to these things. I had to work when I was 10, whatever, right? You put yourself in this situation. And so I'm like, is this disadvantaged or not? And and I kind of go back and forth. And, and I've heard stories like a, another student who came to this country at 18 for higher education, but came with his sister and basically was his sister's parent because it was just mm-hmm. the two of them that came together. Uh, and the parents stayed back in their home country. And so that, to me, is a little bit more disadvantaged. You're like, hey, I had to come to a new country, learn a new language, new culture, and I didn't have access to other things. And I was just, I was a little bit less enthusiastic about this as a disadvantaged essay. And then the, the other part of it was the second half was basically imposter syndrome. You're like, I don't know if I'm good enough. Other students seem to have more than me. And so I wasn't a big fan of this disadvantaged essay. And I do have uh, my new book that's coming out, and I'll send you a copy of it, Um, The Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Application Process, does have a section on disadvantaged essays with examples Mm -hmm. and feedback, et cetera. Um, And so right off the bat, maybe not the best disadvantaged story and lots of typos if we want to count those as typos. Yeah, I wasn't really sure about the whole disadvantage thing. That's something I actually went back and forth myself with like some professors because I was like, I don't know if I should count it as an international student because like I was not really super clear on that. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard because the AAMC leaves it very vague, and so mm-hmm. you potentially could have marked it and had a little bit of a better story. And I'd go, oh yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, Mm -hmm. but it, it seemed like you were like, I'm disadvantaged because I'm an immigrant and I don't know if I'm as good as the other students. And it just, Mm -hmm. it didn't connect. And that's, that's basically what I say in my book is potentially everyone could mark themselves as disadvantaged. The question is, why do you think you're disadvantaged? That's the more important thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we get to transcript and I see lots of A's, which is great. Lots of A's, lots of A's. So GPA wise, you're great. And that's that's awesome, okay? Mm-hmm. MCAT score, 518, crushed it, right? GPA, MCAT, not a problem. For an international student, not a problem. You should be competitive anywhere that accepts international students. Mm-hmm. So the question is, well, why did you only get one interview? Mm-hmm. So let's go try to find that answer. And the, t- the typical answer for anyone who's watched the application renovation is the story. Your story mm-hmm. probably didn't come out. And we already talked about the typos, and that's potentially a big part of it. Um, so we get to your activity list, and we have honors, awards, recognitions, and you have this list here, which is great. This is the perfect way to, to list honors, awards, and recognitions. Just put them as a list. Great job there. We have presentation posters, and you talk about being this lead investigator for your project, which is great. Again, uh, I'm, I'm not going to focus on it anymore, but just to highlight that you did have kind of the same lack of attention to detail with no space here, mm-hmm. but a space here, a space mm-hmm. after this, a space after here, a space after here. So it's very arbitrary, which is, is I think, worse because if it was a strategic decision to go, I'm just going to get rid of spaces after punctuations to maximize what I can write, I can go, that's a bad decision, but at least you are consistent. <laughs> Here, it just looks sloppy because you're okay. like, some places you did, some places you didn't, and that's just a bad a bad look in general. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so enough about that. Let's, again, just focus on the story itself. So you talk about... Uh, attending a conference and presenting this poster. I just am not a fan of these types of takeaways. This experience helped me gain confidence in public speaking. Mm -hmm. Great. 
Do you need to be a great public speaker to be a great physician? Nope. Am I looking for great public speakers to accept from medical school? Nope. Obviously, confidence is great. Uh, public speaking is great. But is that a necessity? No. Uh, I typically don't like the, this taught me, this, uh, I learned this, I gained this. I, I don't like those types of takeaways for experiences. Um, very interesting research, right? <laughs> Watching people walk. Um, so it's kind of funny. We get to this leadership core member of interprofessional grand rounds. And you see I highlighted here that you didn't talk about yourself at all. It's, hey, we did this. We did this. We did this. Our goal was this. It was all like, in general, here's this activity. And there was nothing about you that I could explore here. And that's what I want in these activity descriptions. Is I want to learn more about who you are. Okay. Period. And all I got from this was, here's the big picture of what this organization was. Okay? Okay. Um, talking about Senator for the School of Science and Engineering. Again, we, 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 right? Nothing about you. And, and I don't know if that's some of that imposter syndrome that you wrote about in your disadvantaged <laughs> essay about like, I don't like talking about myself. I don't know if I'm good enough. But that's the goal of this section is let me understand who you are. Okay. And again, the I learned type experience takeaway here is this experience has helped me learn to discuss sensitive issues with people. You're like, oh, that's a skill that's necessary to be a doctor. So I'm going to highlight that here. Right. I don't need you to make those comparisons. Mm -hmm. Research lab, just way too technical here about what mm -hmm. you're doing uh, with this lab experience. So you don't need to get technical. More research. Again, there's nothing about you here. Um, it's just the, the project in general. Uh, again, your takeaway was, hey, I learned lab techniques. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, not important. Mm -hmm. um, more research in lab. So right off the bat, I'm like, lots of research going on here. And it's not uncommon, unfortunately, for international students to have a lot of research because that's uh, a lot of research is school based where you have access as someone who's on a visa versus going out and getting a job, getting yeah. a clinical experience. It's much harder. So I understand that as an international applicant. It's just it's one of the unfortunate struggles. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, what did you learn? Well, I learned organization, precision, and leadership. Again, I don't care. I'm not interested in that. I want to know who you are. Not that you think you have the skills necessary to be a doctor. And then we have um, clinical experience. And I'm pretty sure this was your only clinical experience, if I remember correctly, which is Cope Health Scholar. Mm -hmm. It was several years ago. 250 hours is, is a lot of hours, but it's one chunk during the summer many years ago and so there's there's always going to be this question mark of why don't you have more clinical experience and again i i understand from an international student perspective it's harder it's not impossible it just makes it harder mm -hmm. um basic job description of what cope health is in, in terms of your experience description you have an interesting story that you try to talk about in your most meaningful experience remarks. Um, but you you focus on these weird, like I made sure the isolation carts were stocked with gowns, gloves, and masks. Like don't focus on that stuff because that's not clinical experience, right? <laughs> um, and so it brings doubt into the reviewer's mind. Is this truly clinical experience? You have 250 hours here over the course of a couple months. Was half of it this kind of just stocking the shelves? Um, and so don't focus on, on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just a style thing here of whom I will call, right? You don't need that. Put Dr. S, put it in quotes the first time you use it. Um, or just use real initials, right? Doctor's initials are less important to kind of keep anonymous than patients are. So, okay. um, 
I, I don't like the whom I will call type language. Um, I would have loved to see a story about a patient interaction, right? Tell me a, a patient interaction. Show me that experience, why that was important to you. Your next experience here, volunteer at Holly Park Community Church. Again, just a very basic job description. Nothing about who you are. Um, again, chemistry tutor, lots of hours. So there's this weird thing that I highlighted this. I'm concerned about your clinical experience hours and you have 900 hours of tutoring. I'm like, this is where you spent all your time. Why didn't you spend more time getting clinical experience? That's going to be the question in the minds of a reviewer. Okay. Obviously being a tutor was either, uh, more passionate for you, more interesting to you because that's where you spent your time more than getting clinical experience. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the takeaway. Um, again, your job description is just a very basic description of what all tutors do. Mm -hmm. right? Your most meaningful here was great because you told a story about a specific student that you interacted with. Okay. So good job with that one. Um, volunteer at Hope Place. Again, very basic job description. The volunteer at nursing home, again, just very uh, basic kind of information. I would have loved to see a specific story here. Right? You, you talked in general. It filled my heart with joy to see 90-year-old grandmothers excited about their new look. Right? Tell me a specific story, a specific 90-year-old mm -hmm. grandmother. And then we get to shadowing. Your shadowing's great. Uh, you have it over long periods of time. You, uh, it's consistent, right? You list here, which is a great way to do it. You have a little bit of a, of a description as well. Um, so that's really good. Good job getting that. Okay. Um, same thing here. Just the, the, you'll see, right? That's just basic job descriptions, not, any storytelling, I don't get to understand who you are at the end of the day. Um, I've, I said here, right, focus on one story for your most meaningful remark here. It would have been better. Mm -hmm. um, little typo here, likely language issue. I will, I, will, I will still be cheering them on from the sidelines instead of on them. So... Mm -hmm kind of combined with the other spacing issues and other stuff, it just looks sloppy. Like you didn't take the time to look at your mm -hmm. application, which is just a huge no-no. Um, love the coffee story. I hate coffee, but this was a good story. <laughs> Thank you. So that was good. All right. Questions about activities? Um, I guess one of my main thing was the most uh, important ones. I guess I was more confused because I didn't know if I was supposed to put two stories or just um, have like kind of more of an outline, but then I didn't, that I think turned out to be basic. So I guess that's what I was mostly confused about. Yeah, if, if you can do two stories, great. Okay. Almost no activity needs basic job description. Okay. It just doesn't need it. It doesn't mm -hmm. help me understand who you are. Makes sense. Okay. All right. Let's get into personal statement. So we get into really good showing right off the bat. My eyes were burning as I kept staring at the intermittent blue light sitting on the gritty sidewalk in the misty October air. I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. Where, where was this writing earlier? Right? I was waiting to see my cousin walk out of the ambulance as if nothing had happened. My 10-year-old brain tried to come up. Right, So right off the bat, I'm like, okay, I'm intrigued. What's going on here? Um, and then you have this story of someone who it looks like they died, right? Your, your cousin mm -hmm. died of this brain aneurysm. And so right off the bat, I can see that something impactful happened to you. And this potentially led to you exploring healthcare in some way. Mm -hmm. And so you, you talk about, and again, just one more highlight here of just some spaces, some not spaces. So again, just some sloppiness. Um, 
you get to this story of, okay, what's the reflection, right? What did this mean to you? And you get all the way down to, so you have this first paragraph that tells an interesting story. You get into this second paragraph talking about your primary care physician who was kind of there to help support you through this. Um, the Once the dust settled, this unrest turned into motivation. Dr. M's support showed me that good can derive from awful situations. Physicians don't have a magic wand that can fix everything or the answer to every question, but they can be a supporting listening presence, and this can make a huge impact on people's life. So I think what you were trying to do was show how that interested you, mm -hmm. but what it turned into was just a generic statement. Mm -hmm. The goal is, why do you want to be a doctor? How did this experience motivate you to explore healthcare? And you just left it with a generic statement of like, ooh, doctors can help. Mm -hmm. Not, I want to be a doctor, but, ooh, doctors can be helpful, okay? So very common, like, you got halfway there and then you, you stopped, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you, you do kind of say here, this is the, the first attraction to medicine, which is great, and then you have other experiences. So you're, you're on the right track. It could be more impactful. Okay. The story here, right, shadowing, I typically do not like shadowing as stories in a personal statement because shadowing typically is I saw doctor in, in this specific situation. Um, you don't have the doctor's name here. It doesn't look like. But I saw Dr. Smith do this. I saw Dr. Smith do that. I saw Dr. Smith be impactful. I saw Dr. Smith be compassionate. I want to be like Dr. Smith. That's typically... The, the structure of shadowing in a personal statement. It's just not very impactful. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you have it here. I observe the physicians address patients holistically examining them as multifaceted individuals. What's the point of that statement? I guess looking back on it, I'm just like, I felt like it belonged there, but then also like what you just said, it has nothing to do with me, but just what it has to do with others. Exactly. Of exactly. And so you have a patient story that you're coming in here with, again, whom I will call, get rid of that and just put quotes around John the first time you use it. Mm -hmm. that, that makes it known to be a pseudonym. Um, extreme fatigue. Um, and then you get into this comparison of like, oh, John came in for fatigue, had diabetes, he was an immigrant. This is something I could relate to having left my family. Um, potentially it works in a personal statement to try to bring that in. Um, not super necessary to help me understand why you want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm like, okay, where's this going? And then you have this, I understood the desire to achieve something that in our country wasn't possible. Now, are you talking about Italy? Or are you talking about the U S I'm not sure what you're talking about. Because you say our country, which is the country of John, I'm assuming, um, unless John is also from Italy, and so our country is Italy. So it's just some confusion there about exactly where you're talking about. Um, and then you get a little bit of kind of like why you're leaving, although this is in your disadvantaged essay. So is it necessary to be in your personal statement? If it's going to be in one, it doesn't have to be in the other. And then, again, the, the, the biggest takeaway here is the doctor, right? The doctor listened and developed a patient-centric plan. And this patient-centric conversation also showed me a teaching and learning aspect to medicine, which aligns with my pre-existing passion for learning, right? I like science. I love to learn. Super cliche. Don't need that. Uh, solidified through my tutoring experience. It's like, oh, I'm ready to be a doctor because I was a tutor, that's basically what you're saying here. Okay. Okay. So not you're you're focused on the wrong thing. The focus should be here's why I want to be a doctor. Here's why this experience with John confirmed in my mind that I want to be a physician. And you twisted it to here's what I saw with this exposure with John and the interaction with John and the doctor that made me realize that I have the skills necessary to be a doctor. 
Okay. Makes sense. So then you talk about the volunteering, seeing this population you would love to help as a doctor. Why did you go here? Um, I, I guess because one of like my main, uh, volunteering activity has always been, um, with underprivileged children or children that have experienced trauma. And that's something that I do know that if I do become a doctor is something that I'd want to continue working on. Okay. Um, and I thought about including that in my personal statement as well. Um, but I'm not, but I wasn't really sure like how to put it in, in a way that would like be smooth and like be coherent with the narrative, I guess. Okay. So I don't think it belongs in a personal statement. I, I <laughs> typically reserve the personal statement for why do you want to be a doctor? Not what do you hope to do as a physician? Mm, okay. Okay. Two different things. A lot of secondary essays will focus on what you hope to do. So reserve that conversation for that and mm -hmm. for interviews. Um, and so you you have this kind of discussion of serving in a woman's shelter and um, taking care of children who have experienced trauma. You could have potentially told a very impactful story here of one of these experiences that confirmed why you want to be a physician. But mm -hmm. it's mostly just, hey, I've been exposed to these types of patients. And here's what I've learned from it, right? I've learned how to de-escalize aggressive behaviors and listen, and acknowledge, and be present. Again, you're focused on skills, and I, I just want to know why do you want to be a doctor, right? Why mm -hmm. medicine? Okay. So you get to your conclusion here, and it's okay, right? Becoming a physician would not only redeem the helplessness I felt, which again is a very common reason for wanting to explore this, which is great. It would also allow me to help others like Dr. M helped me and my family. Um, again, very, very common takeaway, which is okay. Uh, and th this is an interesting thing. I know I can only help people medically if I get the best possible training. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Um, and I, you you go on to say basically like I can only help people medically if I get trained in the U.S., which is it's not true, right? Mm -hmm. It's like are all the doctors in the world trained in the U.S.? No, obviously not. Mm -hmm. Is the U.S. home of all of the best doctors? No, obviously not. Um, I think we we as as Americans have a big ego about our healthcare system, which isn't the best in the world. Um, I think our training potentially is, but um, the system itself has some issues. Um, and so just a weird kind of focus on the U.S. and why you're here, I don't think is needed. And it's just more of a distraction. Um, so I think there's lots of question marks left into like, who are you? You're obviously, you're not a U.S. citizen. Are you planning on just training here and going back to your home country? Are you planning to do international stuff? Like, I'm not sure what your goal is. And so mm -hmm. I'm not sure as a medical school if I want to train you, if you're mm -hmm. just going to go leave. I So there's lots of questions. And then just, I can, I can see potentially why you want to be a doctor with what happened with your cousin and some of the mm -hmm. exposures you've had, I think the personal statement could be stronger to help tie some of those things together and help me understand more. Um, and then I think just, again, from the experience descriptions, really helping me understand more of who you are and then just more clinical experience to really focus in on, mm -hmm. on getting those experiences. Sounds good. And then school list, again, is, is just really hard for... Um, for international students, but I'm assuming you did your homework and found schools that actually interviewed and accepted international students. Yes. It's like the majority of them are private. There's a couple public schools that, um, listed that they were very like open-minded when it came to like international students. So I also sent a couple of applications there, but not like all of the state schools because also some pre-health advisors were just like, it's probably not worth the money because it's very unlikely that you're going to yeah. get an interview at all. Yeah. It's one of the places where the MSAR is really helpful because it shows, mm -hmm. at least for the AAMC schools, for AMCAS, it shows 
how many international students applied, how many were interviewed. Because mm -hmm. some schools may say that they're international friendly, and you see that 100 international students applied and zero were interviewed. I'm like, eh, I probably shouldn't waste my application here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's where the MSAR can be handy. Yeah, definitely. Questions about what we talked about? Um, if I were to reapply, so you would say it's most essentially mostly about like the focus on the story and like a lot more showing who I am essentially. That's what in, I mean. in terms of your activity descriptions, mm -hmm. uh, I think you need more clinical experience. Period. I'm currently like a medical scribe. I've been since like the end of last. The thing is like I so I graduated in June and like I couldn't work off campus because being on a visa. So I can only I can only work off campus once I graduated. And I started working as a scribe like in August. Great. Perfect. And so that's a potential update for mm -hmm. the school where you interviewed at. If, if they mm -hmm. don't know that, um, I would potentially update them on that once mm -hmm. they give you some sort of decision, hopefully here in the next couple of weeks. But yeah. the fact that you're scribing now tells me, great, go ahead and apply this next cycle. Okay. Uh, if you didn't have any clinical experience still, I would say don't apply this cycle and mm -hmm. get that clinical experience. But mm -hmm. you've, you've been getting clinical experience. You'll have almost a year by the time you apply, which yeah. is which is awesome. And hopefully you can reflect on some of those stories. Describing is, is hard to to have some good impactful stories because it's basically shadowing on steroids. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's it's better than nothing. Okay, sounds good. All yeah, right. those were my main my main questions, I guess. Okay. And yeah, being an international student, I feel like the all this advantage thing was one of the things I struggled the most. I kept like erasing and going back. And I think that's also where like all the spaces and all the grammar got a bit messed up because it kept like going back and forth. But yeah, that's that's the biggest thing for me is mm -hmm. is you you need to fix that for next application cycle. Um, is really make sure all the punctuation is good, all the spacing is good. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no weird grammar issues. So um, okay. Grammarly is a great tool for that. Um, mm -hmm. as a as a tool that's a browser plugin or they have just their their main website that you can use mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll, I'll also send you a copy of my my new book the pre-med playbook guide to the medical school application process i'll send you a pdf thank you. That to hopefully help craft the application moving forward mm -hmm. thank you so much dr gray yeah you're welcome anything else i can help you with no i think that's it <laughs> awesome well good luck and keep us updated please Will do. Thank you.